like any other in sta- any other station uh, in clinical station that is in station 1 and 3 actually uh, they assess our physical examination and how we identify the sign and there are marked distribution in differential diagnosis including the main diagnosis and there is clinical judgment and maintaining patient welfare so the assess in this five sector and among this there is an important thing is that in identifying physical sign if you identify the wrong sign uh, it they will <coughs> minus us okay just like so if we, if we create any sign uh, <coughs> uh, just uh, in one station uh, which when i appear there is a uh, only iv cannula in situ and patient has mild anemia apart from this that is a abdominal station i could not find anything actually at that station and <clears throat> i got 10 out of 20 and same patient one one is said there is anemia as well as splenomegaly he got 3 out of 20 and this lady actually have the anemia as well as hepatomegaly who said this he got 20 out of 20 so if you identify a false sign you will lose your mark so if anything you about any doubt so <laughs> rather to say differential diagnosis or any broad uh, uh, that i could not appreciate okay so uh, if you confuse in the diagnosis why i say this because in cardiology it happens commonly it, it's very common that you can uh, miss the tr <laughs> it's a pansystolic murmur so you you just say differential diagnosis if you not sure about the specific diagnosis okay so it may happen just like it may be there is a uh, aortic valve replacement but it says is a mitral valve replacement at that case it's uh, you, you lose your marks but if you confuse at that time just say that i am confused i think this is okay because it murmur it's happened sometimes you may not identify the actual murmur okay so how will you uh, exam uh, start your procedure uh, just in other station two examiner will come or will lead the station and he, they will uh, immediately after entering the room what you will do just you will wash your hand after that your main aim is to identify the instruction what is said okay <clears throat> because it's a very much important any patient older is comes with history of collapse and they, <laughs> when there is a systolic murmur most possibly it is aortic stenosis okay so it's a very much important actually of what the instruction says sometime examiner will show you the instruction instruction most of the time you will find it is pasted in the table or in front of the patient head so just look out for the instruction then start the examination just like hello i am dr rahman i have been asked to examine you is it okay with you okay never specific that i want to uh, examine your heart in any station actually it does not happen you examine all those things you examine the hand pulse and lots of things just say i am going to examine you is that okay okay so do you have any pain anywhere in your body no during my examination if you feel any pain or discomfort just let me know i'll be gentle okay okay then proper exposure <laughs> here again in if you find there is a female patient <coughs> and you will find there is attendant so just i want to act, i want to do the proper exposure just say this he will do proper exposure actually you have to expose the chest as well as uh, you have to uh, expose the leg from uh, mid thigh to the uh, leg from mid thigh to the leg or just you have at first you have to expose the chest so in case of female ask the female attendant in case of male you can <coughs> usually what happen in case of male um, if uh, just you will ask can i <coughs> put off your shirt please or gown please he, you will find he will uh, unbutton and he will uh, put off his shirt so it's a very easy then okay now <coughs> your aim is to inspection okay your aim is to inspection on inspection your aim is to find out the scar so find out the scar <coughs> so your aim is to find out the scar so because it's most in the station in pacemaker in cardiology scar okay? so if you 
uh, <coughs> categorize the station. Number one station is scar, that is mitral valve replacement or uh, aortic valve replacement or double valve replacement. After that, you will get murmurs. Most commonly, number one again, the murmur is aortic stenosis. See, you will find other murmur also. Uh, in Indian subcontinent, you will find murmur of the rheumatic origin, that is mitral stenosis, mitral regurgitation, mitral stenosis, or combined murmur, aortic stenosis, aortic regurgitation. Yeah. But <clears throat> most of the time, the number one station is scar. So your aim on inspection to find out the scar. And your aim in female to find out the submemory scar. So at first, just after the exposure, <clears throat> just look at the chest. Is there any scar present or not? And then look down. In the leg, is there any other scar? A venous harvesting scar is present or not? So find out the scar. <clears throat> In case of the male, if there is any submemory scar, it's very easy to see. But in case of female, you have to find out, okay? If you find there is a female attendance and the female patient, just say the female attendance, I want to check under surface of the breast, in the left side. Then he will uh, see there is, there is a scar present or not. Why? Because uh, this scar is uh, very much important. Just uh, in previous days, if you uh, check the previous uh, days in the Indian subcontinent or other, uh, if any patient of MS previously comes, they could close mitral commissurectomy through subcostal scar. And after that patient again developed this problem, and now he done the mitral valve replacement through midline scar. So it's, it's, it's possible that same patient have this submemory scar, uh, uh, CMC with a submemory scar, or same time with mitral valve replacement that is midline scar. And another important uh, thing is that recently you may found some scar, which is a minimal invasive uh, cardiac surgery scar. So uh, that is not the midline scar. That sometimes it's the position of that scar actually, uh, third or fourth uh, or fifth intercostal space, maybe sub-memory or sometimes lateral. So those scar is a CABG scar, but minimal, minimal invasive scar. So that's, uh, you may find those scar. So your main aim on inspection, find out the scar. When you find any chest scar, go to the leg to find out any other scar. So uh, this is our uh, first step. And again, don't miss the uh, sub memory scar. Now I, I, you're going to, uh, you have done the inspection. If there is any, uh, any drugs in the table, you may check at that but usually you will not find anything. Now you will do the palpation <clears throat> and you will examine the patient starting from the hand. Any patient, you will examine the patient starting from the uh, hand. Okay. Now uh, just say, I am. can you show me your hand please? Just look at the patient hand and uh, what you will do. Okay, so just uh, look at the uh, patient hand. In the hand, you start from the nail. Any patient start from the nail. So in the nail, you will see the clubbing uh, or any splinter uh, humerus. So you start from the nail. In the nail, uh, you will see the clubbing. Is there any clubbing present or not? Or splinter humerus. Now, you can check the nail bed, uh, nail uh, bed or nail pulp to see any uh, oscillar node or general relation. Oscillar node or uh, general relation. Most of the time, you will not find anything because those patients of infective endocarditis not just come in the exam. Okay. Then uh, just you will check the nail and the nail pulp. Then you will check the pulse, patient uh, uh, pulse. Okay. Now you will check the patient pulse. In pulse, your aim is to identify two things. Rate and rhythm, rate and rhythm. If you say the most important thing missing in the PSS exam, that is atrial fibrillation. If any patient comes with stroke, always look for atrial fibrillation. And be sure it is the cause is atrial fibrillation, either paroxysmal or persistent. Patient comes with TIA, looks for atrial fibrillation. And see investigation for atrial fibrillation. So most important thing, 
you will miss in the exam is atrial fibrillation. So again, you will check the pulse for rate and rhythm. So we will check the two thing, rate and rhythm. And uh, if any patient is having atrial fibrillation <coughs> with fast ventricular rate, you may easily miss the pulse or, or you may misunderstand the pulse only by it's maybe a low volume pulse. So if any patient having the low volume pulse, uh, be careful, it may be atrial fibrillation. So at first, check the rhythm, then count the pulse. For pulse countation, I actually you will not uh, have any watch. You can put your watch in the pocket and you can uh, just, or you can examine, ask the examiner, I need a watch. Then examiner will show his watch and you can count the pulse for 15 seconds uh, in the examiner's uh, watch. So number two thing is pulse. pulse. Pulse, rate and rhythm. Two thing, rate and rhythm. And again, be aware, aware that if any patient have low volume pulse, always check if it's atrial fibrillation or not. Okay. Then you will go up and you will just uh, look, the, uh, look in the eye. In the eye, uh, you will look, is there any uh, anemia or uh, jaundice present or not? Then you will go the check the oral cavity. Okay, in oral cavity at a glance. Okay. Now, uh, what you will go? You will go to check the patient JVP, that is uh, jugular venous uh, pressure. Okay. In uh, jugular venous pressure, you have to position the patient in 45 degree. Most of the time, you will find that you will find that uh, patient bed is 45 degree. So it's very easy. Uh, just lie down the patient and look at the patient neck. Ask the patient to move his head to the left. Then look at the patient neck. Is there any jugular pulsation present or not? Just move your eye towards the neck. Okay, either present or not. <clears throat> Just closely observe the patient to show that you are trying to uh, find it out very carefully. Is, is there any JVP present or not? So it's very much important. Most of the time, you will not find anything in the neck. Okay, so you will find there is a nothing in the neck. Why? Because if any patient is congestive heart failure due to valvular heart disease or any other thing, those patients will not come in the exam. And again, if any patient have pulmonary hypertension, actually those patients is already on drug. He is on diabetes as well as uh, he is on beta blocker. So uh, his uh, JBP will not be prominent. So your aim is to identify the JBP. Okay. After the JPP, uh, you will go to the precordium. So next, you will go to the precordium. In precordium, again, you will do the inspection. If you don't do inspection properly, okay? Here, you can check the precordium very carefully, the lateral aspects that are armpit or axilla. And uh, if you want, you can sit down the patient to see the back. Sometimes there is a possibility the scar may be present in the back, okay? Uh, if any patient who, <coughs> who has a TOF previously had underwent BT shunt, you'll find scar in the back. So your next aim is to find out the uh, scar. Again, to see the precordium. Okay. Now you're going to do the palpation. So before uh, palpation, again, uh, say the patient that I'm going to check your heartbeat. Is that okay? Or I'm going, sorry, I'm going to feel your heartbeat. Is that okay? Okay. Then check the uh, apex bit. After that, check the left parasternal hip, then check the palpable P2 present or not. Okay. So in precordium, uh, I have already done the inspection of if I don't do the inspection properly, again, just a simple look. Then palpation. In palpation, we'll check the apex bit. Just say, I'm going to feel your uh, heartbeat. Is that okay? Okay then left parasternal hip, and then palpable P2. So, so, so apex bit, left parasternal hip, and palpable P2, okay. And then we're going to check the thrill. So after that, we're going to palpate the thrill, okay. So after that, I'll, I'll do the thrill palpation, thrill. Just I'll put my <coughs> forefinger uh, over the aortic, then over the pulmonary, over the tricuspid area, 
that is the effluent external is, and then again the mitral area. In this way, I will feel the uh, thrill. Is there any thrill present or not? Now I'm going to the heart sound. Now I'm going to check the patient heart sound. So thrill, then I will check the heart sound. Again, when I start to see the heart sound, I will check in each area for 20 seconds. Very carefully, at least for 10 to 20 seconds each area. Okay. So each area, 20 seconds, starting from the uh, uh, epical area or uh, mitral area, then move to the tricuspid, then move to the pulmonary, then move to the aortic. Okay. So why do I put my stethoscope in that area? Again, my first aim, first aim is to check the rhythm, check the rhythm. Rhythm. Is it atrial fibrillation or not? So first step is check the rhythm, check AF. So is it atrial fibrillation or not? Because if any patient is having murmur, what's happened? We uh, put the stethoscope, we'll go to the murmur. So first step, check the rhythm. Then second, you'll check heart sound. You'll check S1 and S2 properly. So second, check the heart sound is S1 and has to properly. Now check the murmur. Third, you check the murmur. Is there any murmur present or not? So <clears throat> your target, you will identify every area, at least you will <clears throat> examine every area at least 10 to 20 seconds. First, start from the mitral area, then tricuspid, then pulmonary and aortic area. You will aim first to check the rhythm. Is it atrial fibrillation or not? Then check the first and second heart sound. Then thirdly, check the murmur. We'll discuss some murmur later. Okay. After that, <coughs> now after the auscultation, you just go to the back. In <coughs> in back, you will check if there is crepitation present or not. So then I will ch check the lung base. Lung base for crepitation. So take a breath, deep breath in and out, and always uncover the area, uncover the area, okay? So <clears throat> if you auscultate through the clothes, say they will minus your marks, okay? So what you will do, uncover the area, place your stethoscope, ask to take a deep breath, then check the lung base. You will not found anything. Because if any patient of heart failure, he will not come in the exam. After that, you will check the leg edema. Go to the leg and check the leg edema. Look, <clears throat> place uh, your index finger over the medial bellulosus and press or for 10 to 15 seconds, then check the edema. So in this way, you will check the patient. So again, first aim, uh, first I will do the inspection. In the inspection, my aim is to identify the scar. If there is a midline stenosis scar or any scar in the uh, submemory scar in female, <coughs> then go to the patient, see the patient leg, any other scar present or not. Then do the uh, inspection. After uh, inspection, you will check the patient hand. In the hand, you will check the nail. In every station, you will check the nail. In respiratory station, you will check the nail. In abdominal station, you will check the nail. In cardiovascular station, you will check the nail. If any patient comes with joint pain in any station, you will check the nail. So nail is very much important in this. Okay. Then go to the, uh, check the patient pulse. In pulse, uh, you will check the rhythm and rate. Only two things. Not, I will not say anything about the volume or any other thing. Just rate and rhythm. Then go up, check the anemia, jaundice in the eye, oral cavity. Then check the neck. The neck carefully for the JBP. We'll move our eye towards the patient neck and check very carefully if there are any jugular venous pressure present or not. Sometimes if you want, you may press over the abdomen to see the hepatojugular reflux, okay? But uh, <clears throat> if any patient don't have any jugular venous pressure, you don't need to do another thing. To the precordium, again inspection, in inspection, any scar, you can check the any, uh, any visible uh, epical impulse or visible any other impulse. Then palpation, 
starting from the apex bit, left parasternal hip, palpable P2, something you may check palpable A2. Then auscultation, main idea, auscultate 10 to 20 seconds in each area uh, separately. And, and uh, starting from the mitral area, then go to the tricuspid pulmonary aortic area. First, you will identify the rhythm. Is it regular or irregular? Then check the uh, uh, first heart sound and second heart sound very much carefully. Then uh, murmur, check the murmur. Then lung base auscultation. After that, go to the leg to see any edema. So this is the examination procedure. So uh, any question up to this procedure? Hello. Hey, hello. Uh, sir, this uh, left parasternal hip, uh, how we should check it by, by okay. the side of the hand or by putting whole hand over it? Yes, uh, you can uh, check by the side of the hand. Okay. okay. And only uh, on the left lateral side or have to be on a mitral area or tricuspid area? Only once is okay? Only once, yes. Only once okay. in the uh, left lateral side. Okay. Okay. Sir, sir, yeah. os uh, hello. The ostler notes. Yes. Ostler notes. How will they appear on the fingers? Okay. Just in the nail, nail part, you will feel is there any painful nodule present or not? You will. It is a red, painful nodule over the palm. So actually, you will not find. <coughs> you just look at the finger, and after that, you palpate the nail palm. Just one or two finger to show the examiner that you are searching for horse finger. And sir, Janeway lesions are on the palm, right? Yes, yes. No, no, no. Uh, <coughs> generally, also in the finger. Fingers. Okay, yes. Not on the palm. Uh, nothing we have to see. In the palm, there is uh, nothing. In case of uh, palm is important for abdominal. And hello, doctor. For this thrill, we need to uh, examine all the areas, mitral area, tricuspid yes, yes. area. Yes, uh, okay. yes. Uh, for the chill, uh, fall for area. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. So now uh, something about the marmar. How we will uh, <coughs> identify the marmar? Just some uh, simple uh, tricks. So uh, regarding the uh, marmar, we will found uh, here mainly systolic or uh, diastolic marmar. Again, in, <coughs> in case of the, uh, we should once, I should remember, we should remember one thing that if any patient have any systolic marmar, it's very easy. Put your stethoscope, you will find the marmar. And if any patient have a diastolic marmar, you should you have to find out that marmar. Okay, so you have to do the procedure, you have to find out. And in systolic marmar, you just put your stethoscope, you'll find the marmar. Here, if you compare the intensity, it will be more louder than the faster saying sound. If you compare the diastolic marmar, it is <coughs> no. It is uh, not louder like uh, faster send her sound. Okay, it is softer than faster send her sound. That's why you have to find out the murmur in case of diastolic murmur. So it's a general. So in systolic murmur, yeah, you can find two types of systolic murmur. That is ejection systolic and that is pen systolic. In ejection uh, systolic murmur, again, there is a aortic stenosis, pulmonary stenosis. Okay. In pen systolic marmar, actually you find MR, TR, and VSD. And in case of diastolic marmar, what marmar is most common? Now we're early diastolic marmar or uh, mid diastolic marmar. So in early diastolic marmar is aortic regurgitation, and mid diastolic marmar is mitral stenosis. Now look, if you, <coughs> so among those marmar, most common is aortic. Stenosis. So, if any patient have aortic stenosis, you have to find out that. Okay. And in case of the uh, systolic, uh, pan systolic marmars, again, most common is mitral regurgitation because it may be ischemic or it may be uh, rheumatic. So, mitral uh, regurgitation. And now in the diastolic marmar, diastolic marmar, most of the time, in the <coughs> if the patient is elderly or uh, they will found there is a aortic uh, regurgitation. So if 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 
Again, another test to be permanent in the rheumatic origin is uh, mitral stenosis. Okay, so it's very much it's, it's differ where you <coughs> the exam center. See if the exam center is uh, in the Middle East or mostly in the India, or Pakistan. So here uh, you you will find the murmur of uh, mixed murmur because uh, if the it is a rheumatic origin, usually more than one valve is already involved, possibly. But it, if it is ischemic uh, or it is degenerative, usually it just involve the uh, single one. Now, how we will uh, identify if <clears throat> so? First thing is you have to identify either it is systolic or diastolic murmur. Again, in, in case of the uh, <coughs> systolic murmur, it's very easy to find. And again, in case of the diastolic murmur, you have to find out. So loudness is an important thing. Another important is that if, if you find any pen systolic murmur, actually at that time, you will not differentiate either it is faster sound or second sound. You will heard the whole murmur as a whole, heart sound and murmur as a whole. Okay, so if you identify it is faster sound than murmur, then second heart sound, actually it's the ejection systolic murmur. In ejection systolic murmur, in case of the AS, actually uh, there is no second heart sound. So you just only hear the one sound which is mixed with the first heart sound. So first heart sound, immediately the systolic murmur and there is no second heart sound. So this, this is a uh, aortic stenosis murmur. So <clears throat> again, uh, if you compare between aortic stenosis and pulmonary stenosis, so in case of the aortic stenosis, you will found there is a ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area. The aortic area, uh, which radiates towards the neck. Okay. And in case of the pulmonary stenosis, you will get the same murmur in the pulmonary area, which radiates towards the neck. But the thing is that pulmonary stenosis is very rare, number one, and it is usually associated with syndrome. So, <clears throat> so it's very rare, and same time it is associated with syndrome. So it's, it usually does not come in the exam. And another thing is that this pulmonary stenosis murmur uh, uh, may be associated with a TOF. Okay, so in case of the TOF, there is usually two murmur, pulmonary stenosis and BHD murmur. But uh, BHD is here, BHD murmur is only we can listen the pulmonary stenosis murmur. So, and uh, if you consider the A's, both congenital and uh, <clears throat> this uh, congenital that is Nodan syndrome and TOF is a patient age is usually found below 30. Okay, so he is a very young patient. But in compare the aortic stenosis, most of the common cause is degenerative. Then you can find the congenital that is bicuspid aortic valve. So and again in case of the bicuspid aortic valve, common age of presentation is after 35 or 40. So in aortic the age is usually more than 40. Okay, and if there will be an ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area, which is radius to the neck, and will will not found any S2, so no S2. Okay, same uh, in, in case of pulmonary stenosis murmur, no S2. Okay, so if you found there is ejection systolic murmur, which is in the aortic area, <coughs> and uh, which radius toward the neck, patient is older is most commonly this is a murmur of aortic stenosis. <clears throat> but in patient of the young, if you deal with the young patient, so there is possibility of pulmonary stenosis. So if you check the nail, patient is cyanotic, there is a possibility of TOF. And in case of the no syndrome, <clears throat> patient is mental retardation, characteristic faces. <clears throat> so uh, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a look like short stature, wipe neck, just a Turner syndrome. Say at that time, it's, it's possible there is a PS. So considering those, those these two things, most common is aortic stenosis. So I found ejection systolic murmur, which radiates towards the neck. And uh, if you check the intensity of the murmur, it is more in the aortic area than in the pulmonary area. And in case of the tricuspid and uh, <clears throat> mitral area, it will be less in the mitral area. So this is the uh, decreasedness of the loudness of the murmur.
yes in yellow water and phenomena this uh, maybe this marmar may be <coughs> may be prominent in the mitral area but uh, this is not the usual things okay so uh, <coughs> hope we will uh, uh, radiate okay. this uh, uh, we will differentiate yeah. the aortic stenosis and pulmonary stenosis okay so please repeat now, the last last line you said intensity of murmur will be more in mitral uh, yes in no in, in the aortic stenosis intensity of the murmur if you find there is a uh, <coughs> intensity of the murmur is more in the aortic area than pulmonary than tricuspid than in the mitral area there is some difference case of galavardin phenomena that is aortic stenosis with galavardin phenomena the, this murmur is loud in the mitral area okay so sometimes it's confused with the other systolic murmur that is you may consider is mr or not but it is the not the usual thing it happens in the very elderly patient where uh, so it's a very finding the elderly patient okay. now uh, uh, other murmur like uh, if mr tr and bsd okay how we will differentiate in this uh, three murmur again here primary tricuspid degeneration is very rare it's a very rare disease number one and is usually associated with other it is a signs of pulmonary hypertension so if any patient uh, is, is having the pulmonary hypertension we will find the tr in those patients okay and in the case of if any patient is a tr that is a primary tr at that time he, there will be a florid picture of pulmonary hypertension we will find that there is a raised JVP in case of the primary tear, as well as we will found there is a <coughs> pulsatile liver. So it's a very, uh, it's not possible or it's a very unusual to put any patient of TR. Right? Now, how we will differentiate in TR, in TR we will found the intensity of the murmur in the uh, left lower sternal is mostly in the third or fourth intercostal space. Now, in case of the MR, the intensity of the murmur is loudest in the mitral area. Okay. And again, as this is a pan-systolic murmur, so we will not differentiate it. Either it's faster sound or second hour sound. It's a whole, <coughs> it's, a, uh, so it's, it's covered from the faster sound to second hour sound. So we'll hard faster sound murmur and second hour as a whole. Okay. So in case of the, it's a more at the mitral area, and then it's radius towards the axilla. Okay. Uh, radius towards the axilla. Okay. So what is uh, regarding the ra radiation, it's very much important is that it will be same intensity marble, okay? same intensity, both at the mitral and axilla. That is called the radiation. If any sound, people have actually a very small area. So if any marble in the aortic area, Obviously, you will find this murmur in the <coughs> mitral area also. But the you <coughs> and then, so it's a very small area. But when we say the radiation, that means the intensity of the murmur is same. So if any murmur in the <coughs> in the mitral area, if you put your stethoscope over the back, at that time you can hear also the murmur. Okay. But the intensity will both be same. So if the mitral area and as well as axilla having the same intensity, at that time we'll say this palmar radiate towards the axilla. Here we'll found there is a, a S1 is soft, but it's very much difficult to identify. But if in case of the aortic stenosis, there is a absent A2. That means the absent S2, uh, second heart sound. But it is very easy to identify. As there is a only the ejection systolic murmur, uh, normally faster sound and second heart sound this is the systole area and ejection systolic murmur is faster sound ejection systolic murmur then there is a gap so it's very easy to identify in case of as but here in mr if, there is a soft faster sound but it is very tough to identify okay. now look at the bhd in case of the bhd again if you consider the age of the patient uh, it's <coughs> young especially it will be youngest Yes, BSD can occur in case of the myocardial infraction. And in any patient with myocardial infraction with BSD, 
actually he will survive only two or three days without urgent surgery. So this patient never come to the exam. So uh, we will found the uh, BSD that is a congenital heart disease. So in congenital heart disease patient, uh, <laughs> patient age he will be young, number one. Number two, in the, if you consider the <laughs> intensity of the murmur, it is a more prominent in the left lower stimulus. And if you put our stethoscope over the right side of the uh, <coughs> right side of the sternum, we'll find the same intensity. Okay. So this is the uh, clue how we can identify the marble. So put your stethoscope over the uh, left side. Uh, yes, we have shown there is a pan-systolic marble. This pan-systolic marble may be MRTR or BHD. In axilla, uh, you can have the same intensity of our but uh, sorry, in mitral area, there is also pen murmur. You go check the axilla, uh, axilla, there is a no, intensity is decreased. So this is not the MR. Now check it is a TR or not. Again, TR is very rare. Okay. So TR is uh, very rare. So place your stethoscope over the right side of the sternum. If you find the same intensity murmur, this is, is BHD, most possibly, and patient will be young is so this is a, a clue to identify the bhd so this is the pen systolic marmar again mr tr and bhd tr for mr mitral area and i will check the radiation for tr very rare which is associated with pulmonary hypertension and bhd <coughs> young patient will put our stethoscope of both side of the sternum now uh, <coughs> what's the uh, aortic uh, Uh, yes, the BSD does not uh, radiate towards the uh, axilla. Now, how will it differentiate of the uh, aortic regurgitation? So, yes, in aortic regurgitation, actually, we find the three murmur. There is an early diastolic murmur, there is a mid diastolic murmur, and uh, there is a systolic flow murmur. Okay, so there is an early diastolic murmur. <laughs> There is a early diastolic, mid diastolic, and systolic flow murmur. So in air, actually, you find three murmur. The characteristic is early diastolic murmur, left lower sternalis. So this is the characteristic finding in case of aortic regurgitation. Okay. And systolic uh, <coughs> flow murmur, flow murmur is uh, we will found this is in the over the aortic area. The, over the aortic area, we will find systolic flow murmur. You will find this over the aortic area. Okay. And in a mid diastolic murmur in AR, there, there is a functional MS. So I will find there is a mid diastolic murmur. But the characteristic finding is early diastolic murmur. So early diastolic murmur, left lower sternal is his characteristics. Okay. So <coughs> When we examine the patient, we'll prepare actually what the diagnosis. And we'll say according to the diagnosis, we'll mix our palpation and auscultation finding according to the diagnosis. Sometimes it's very much uh, hard that uh, you find the, uh, your place of st stethoscope or the aortic area, and in fact, there's a clear uh, injection systolic murmur, place of stethoscope over the neck. Yes, you found that there is a clear neck radiation. You are very much sure this is a case of aortic stenosis. Forget what you found in the pulse. Just forget everything. You say the finding of aortic regurgitation. Uh, yes, there is a low volume. So you so, sorry, you will say your finding according to the aortic radiation. Aortic, uh, sorry, aortic stenosis. So you will say your finding according. Here in case of the AR, just you will find if you are very much sure there is a early diastolic murmur in the left lower sternal age. So you will again you will say every finding according to the aortic area, including the pulse, including the uh, other finding, precordium finding. You will say that the finding of aortic regurgitation. But the main diagnosis is by auscultation because it is more correct. So in case of the here, if you found the MDM, this is the characteristics. Just you will not say any finding of the MDM or systolic uh, flow murmur. So uh, MDM. Now something of the AS and ER. In case of the 
aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation simultaneously. There in aortic regurgitation, you will found that there is an early diastolic murmur in the left lower sternal edge. Okay. In AS, there is also a murmur that is uh, ejection systolic murmur, ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area, which radiates towards the neck. And you know, the important thing is that in case of AR, there is also a systolic flow murmur in the aortic area, which may radiate to the neck. Most of the time, it does not radiate to the neck. But uh, in case of the uh, AS, uh, you will find there is ejection systolic murmur, which always radiates to the neck. So if any patient, <coughs> if you confuse, this is maybe may due to uh, AR or it is AS or AR, it is better. Uh, if you feel any confusion, you, if you say that this is the only case of aortic regurgitation, if you say there is a systolic flow murmur, actually that covers the AS murmur also. Okay. So <clears throat> if you say this gentleman is having aortic stenosis with aortic regurgitation, at that time, uh, if you're finding this patient is old, very much old patient. Uh, <clears throat> so most of the time in the older patient, uh, is uh, in case of the PACES exams, it is better to say one diagnosis if you're not sure about the others. But if you're sure this patient is having, uh, there is also a systolic murmur, but you're not sure it is radiated to the carotid or not. So it would say just this is a case of aortic regurgitation. So when the examiner will ask the question, uh, you say, yes, there is also a systolic flow murmur, but uh, there is also a systolic murmur, but this is the systolic flow murmur of air. But if you're very much sure this is a, there is a systolic flow murmur and you found that the, this murmur radius towards the carotid, that means same intensity in the carotid, that you, you will say the finding of AS plus AR. In both cases, the precordial finding will be the same. That is, you will uh, found some, there is an apex which is shifted, it is thrusting in nature. Uh, you'll, there is no laparostinal hip, palpable P2, A2. But in auscultation, uh, the finding uh, in finding of AS, AR, or only the AR is the same. Okay. Now, uh, it's, it's very rarely uh, you may find the uh, ASD case. So uh, very rarely you may find the uh, ASD case. Actually, it does not come in the exam. Here you will find there is a, a systolic uh, flow murmur in the pulmonary area. Systolic flow, flow murmur in the pulmonary area plus wide and fixed splitting of the second heart sound. So if you're dealing with any young female or middle aged female, there is a systolic flow murmur over the pulmonary area and there is a splitting, wide and split splitting is very tough to identify. But if you find there is a splitting, just you will say this is a wide and fixed splitting of the uh, ASD. And the main duty of ASD in the pulmonary stenosis here, we'll find there's a systolic murmur in the pulmonary area, which radiates towards the carotid. But in AOSD murmur never radiates towards the carotid. Again, in pulmonary stenosis, it is a primary is there. It may be isolated. Uh, as a systolic pulmonary stenosis is very rare. And it is associated with a syndrome. And here, S2, that is absent. But here you will find there's a wide and split splitting of the uh, second hand sound. So this is the uh, simple approach to identify the murmur. Again, yeah, another important thing is that if anyone say what is the most, <coughs> if you have to think the uh, consequence of the murmur. So think this a patient has mitral stenosis. Okay, he will develop left atrial dilatation. He will develop atrial fibrillation. So if you any if you found if you are, if you want to examine so you are doing examination in a patient how pulse is irregular apex bit variable intensity of the faster sound if you found also there is a features of pulmonary hypertension that is left parasternal heave is present so <clears throat> if you don't find any murmur specifically in the precordial that means you are dealing with mitral stenosis case because in mitral stenosis you said diastolic murmur. So you have to find out that murmur. Okay. Again, in case of the mixed murmur, uh, <coughs> you have to consider all those things. In palpation, you will find there is a, a shifting of the apex width. 
the shifting uh, shifting of apex bit so shifting of everything is only occur in case of ar or mr that means any regurgitation murmur is present okay. but in precordia uh, you found there is a only you you ms murmur in the precordium so <clears throat> if you say this is a simple ms it will not uh, cover it will not cover everything because <clears throat> the picoid apex bit is shifted but if you are saying the diagnosis is uh, ms so it will not cover because in case of ms apex bit will not shift so there may be something called mr or ar associated with this ms so how you will identify it's very easy look here mr is systolic murmur so it's very much easy to identify so if you found every time that people there is no other murmur in the picot no systolic murmur then <clears throat> something you are missing the ar so how you will do the ar after the uh, examination just uh, <clears throat> sit down and do the leading forward to the patient leading forward and ask the patient take a deep breath in and out then hold your breath take a deep breath in, <clears throat> in and out then hold your breath after that you will find there is a murmur of ar so in case of shifting of the apex bit the summary is that in case of shifting of the apex bit always consider any other murmur that is any regurgitant murmur ar or mr so if you mr is very easy which is systolic that is pan systolic it is a louder murmur so if you find not if you, if you do not find anything if you say this is ar without being so confirmed you will be right you will be correct okay so uh, <clears throat> this is the in case of the uh, shifting of the apex bit okay now uh, we'll just go through the, the cases sir yes sir, one question sir ms murmur you said if we can't find a murmur uh, we will see with the bell and then uh, also if we can't find then we can say that it, it might be related to some other pathology because we can't find ms then it's a bell with the bell what which yes yes, yes 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 uh, you are right so what i forgot to say sometimes we do the special uh, things sometimes we do the spe uh, special thing at first we will do the simple thing that means we'll check the 20 second from the each area if you find the murmur there is a, a murmur is in case of the ms just we'll do the patient left lateral position we'll do in the left uh, lateral position okay then we'll <coughs> We will check appropriately. We will ask the patient to take a deep breath in and out, then hold your breath. Then we will say they will see the murmur. And in case of the MS, only in case of the MS, we will check the murmur by a bell. In other area, even in the carotid drawing, we just will use the diaphragm. Only in case of the MS, we will use the bell. And another thing is that if you if you use any cardiac uh, stethoscope, actually those stethoscope does not have any uh, bell. It is only one diaphragm. So uh, that was a uh, previous uh, conception that there should be checked by uh, bell. But in case of the uh, new stethoscope, all only one diaphragm. And sir, systolic flow murmur of AR, you said, which can yes. uh, which can be found. It it will be with the diaphragm. If we want no, to confirm, this, we will use uh, the uh, we, all the time you use the diaphragm. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Very no, nice. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, the case uh, most common case in the patients is valve replacement. So, most common case is valve replacement. So, valve uh, replacement. So, yeah. Just at first, I will say the uh, findings. So what I will say, just in case of the valve replacement, it it may be aortic valve replacement or the pulmonary valve replacement. Okay, so it may be uh, aortic valve replacement or uh, mitral valve replacement. Sorry, aortic valve replacement or mitral valve replacement. So how will you? Uh, we will differentiate. Them how we will uh, differentiate that. Look, in case of the 
first go to the natural history. So first go to the research. Any patient developing the mitral stenosis, simple mitral stenosis, don't need to do anything. Just we will see the patient what's happened. So we'll just observe simple mitral stenosis. After that, patient develops severe mitral stenosis. Valve area is less than one centimeter square. Then patient developing complication. That means patient develop AF. Okay. Or <coughs> patient develop other complications. That means patient also develop hemoptysis, patient develop uh, atrial fibrillation, some initially perigosmal, then persistent, then permanent. Then patient develop pulmonary hypertension. So pulmonary hypertension, AF. Okay. So if patient developing complication. At that time, we will do something. So what we will do? We'll check the patient valve status. So what we will do? We'll check the valve. If favorable, then we'll do PTMC. <coughs> if it's not favorable, we'll do valve replacement. Yes, we have done the PTMC. We have done the replace. We have replaced the part, but this will not cover. So there will be still atrial fibrillation. Okay, there pulmonary hypertension may persist for some time. Okay, or it may persist. So if you, you are going to examine any patient, so uh, you are not sure, you are hurting, there is a metal click, but uh, oh, PTMC, that means percutaneous transthoracic mitral commissurectomy. That means mitral valve, bellal valvotomy. So just we will put a catheter over the, uh, just, just like uh, angiogram, the, we'll put the, uh, place the catheter over the mitral valve and then we'll uh, inflate the balloon. They, they, they will increase the area of mitral valve. Okay. So <laughs> the, if we are, uh, now we are examining a patient, think this, this patient, I know this, this is a middle stomach scar, check the leg, no scar. So it's a valve replacement scar as it comes in the paces. Patient is comfortable, everything is good. But when you check the patient is pulsing atrial fibrillation, there is atrial fibrillation. And in the exam, I feel there is a left peristaltic hip. So I'm very much sure this is atrial fibrillation as well as uh, <coughs> left peristaltic hip. So that indicates that I'm dealing with mitral valve replacement. Okay. Yes, atrial fibrillation may be possible in the aortic stress, but it's a very rare phenomenon. Most AF pulmonary hypertension is the finding associated with mitral valve replacement. Just I'm uh, saying how we can differentiate. So this is the natural history. Again, so this is a one clue. Another uh, clue is that <coughs> if uh, if we uh, take the intensity of the sound, say so I know that MVR uh, if. In case of valve replacement, there is a metallic click. So in case of MBR, metallic click is in the mitral area, the mitral area. In AVR, it is in the aortic area, okay? But this does not mean that it is only confined to the aortic area. As because it is a very small area, you will find the same thing in the aortic area, but the uh, mitral area. So, but intensity matters. If intensity is more in the aortic area and then progressively decrease in the mitral area, that indicates I'm dealing with AVR. If the intensity is more in the mitral area than uh, in the aortic area, uh, then I'm dealing with MVR. If you put my stethoscope in between them, the sternum or <laughs> and we, see, we can identify the how uh, it differs in case of dual valve replacement. Sir, so, uh, one yes. question. You mean to say that uh, the intensity will vary vice versa. Like if it is in the uh, mitral area, it is more intense. And in the aortic area, the it is less intense. It means it is the aortic valve replacement. Yes, yes, you're right. Okay. Yes, okay, that thank is you. intensity of the click. Uh, yeah, I click. got it. Yes. Uh, what about uh, the <laughs> time you, with the carotid? I mean, if I hear the click in between the aortic area and mitral area uh, the timing will help me a lot in identify is it going with first heart sound or is it this click is going with second heart sound yes you are right so uh, if this uh, click if the click is coincide with the faster sound that means faster sound 
that is is mitral valve replacement is the click is associated with the second heart sound that means aortic valve replacement and in case of any patient is having heart rate of 80 beat per minute and you are examining the patient you, are, you want to identify which is coincide with the carotid or not or pulse it's very much difficult but if you can identify this it's a very good it's a very easy but most of the time if uh, <clears throat> it's a very tough to identify only it's concise or not because you are uh, picturing two cells feeling as well as hearing at the same time so again uh, if you uh, most of the time what's happened you just we place the stethoscope about times time actually i identify these faster sounds second hearts we will not um, uh, we will trade our ear and usually we don't put the uh, head the, we we all just put our left thumb over the carotid as examination findings so <laughs> in case of difficulty we will do that uh, the lastly okay just i'll say that uh, in the later part again in the uh, if you put my stethoscope yeah, it's uh, confusing it is a mitral valve replacement or aortic valve replacement or dual valve replacement put my stethoscope over the sternum and we think that is uh, there's a Better click and we differentiate uh, the the same intensity. The, I put my stethoscope of the startup and I heard that the intensity is the same in both fa faster sound and second sound. Mostly I am dealing with the dual valve replacement. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> again, so uh, another thing is that another important issue is that by definition, by definition. All valves, all replaced valves, sterotic. It's a by definition, all replaced valve is a sterotic. Okay, all replaced valve is sterotic. That means a patient is aortic regurgitation. We replace the aortic valve without the AVR. Okay, so there will be it will it, it, it will not act as actual valve. It will like little bit S. A patient with mitral valve replacement and we <coughs> it will act like MS. But it's not like, act like severe MS or severe AS. High definition, all valve is little bit sterotic. So in case of the AVR, we, we may find may found some features of AS. Okay. So we may find this some there is maybe some ejection systolic murmur. Okay, some systolic murmur there. And we'll find in case of MS some diastolic murmur there. So <clears throat> this way we can also identify if it is aortic valve replacement or mitral valve replacement. So there are a lot of things. How we can identify if it is aortic replacement or mitral valve replacement. Yes, sir. But this AS murmur of aortic valve replacement will not radiate to the neck, right? Yes, yes, yes. You are right. It will be very soft murmur, but by definition, this this is why because all valve is sterotic. It is the all valve is sterotic. Uh, replace valve is sterotic. Okay. Yes, yes. Now just look at the reverse. If any patient developing murmur of AR, in patient is having already done the aortic valve replacement, but you are finding that AR murmur that is valve is failed already. If any patient developing signs of MR, that indicates valve failure. Okay. Actually, at that time, click will not be audible. Associated, we will find the features of regurgitated murmur in the replace valve. In replace valve, regurgitated murmur indicates failure. But in replace valve, sterotic murmur, that is aortic stenosis, mitral stenosis, may indicate the same intensity. Okay, so the, the yes, exam, they won't give the, uh, the failure regurgitant murmur along with replacement. No, no, no. If any patient yes. with regurgitant murmur is valve failure, patient will be severe breathing difficulty. Yes, only you uh, will uh, not put in the exam. Phenotic uh, features we will get. Okay, yes, yes. So, you, uh, we'll find some features of terotic. So, uh, but we will not say in the exam, uh, they will not say just to, to identify. Lastly, the golden skill that is S1 and S2. It's very tough 
but if you train your ear then you can do so if it coincide to the faster sound that is fa <coughs> that is abr if it coincide to the second hard sound that is uh, avr if it is both that dvr okay so <coughs> this uh, so there are a lot of ways how we can uh, identify this uh, barber and in case of the DVR, in case of the <coughs> DVR, actually it uh, comes very rarely in the exam and we'll find the same pathology. And most interestingly is that if any patient have <coughs> a mitral, uh, if any patient has rheumatic heart disease and patient initially develop MS, now patient develop the aortic problem that it uh, most of the time uh, <coughs> regurgitation. Uh, if any patient develop MS with MR or uh, aortic regurgitation, that any of the regurgitated murmur, at that time it will displace the apex bit. It will displace the uh, apex bit. So what we found in any patient with dual valve replacement, with deep, this, this uh, uh, the clue is apex bit displacement. It's just a clue, apex bit displacement. And there will be metallic teeth coincide both S1 and S2. Okay. So, so just here uh, to identify, there are a lot of clues uh, to, <coughs> to identify it is AVR or MVR. Because sometimes it is very much tough to, what I will say in the exam, AVR or MBR. Okay. So now, how we will say uh, my finding? Okay. Just I will say my finding what I have done. Just on examination of this gentleman, <coughs> I, now I am telling about the uh, findings. Okay. So I think this is a case of MBR. Okay. So on examination of this gentleman, I found there is a midline sternostomy scar. Okay. So I examination of this gentleman, there is a midline sternostomy scar. Okay. So this is the inspection finding and patient uh, pulse is uh, 80 bit per minute, which is regular. Apex bit is, then apex bit is undisplaced. Left parasternal hip purple P2A2 is absent. On auscultation, there is a metallic click, which coincides with the faster sound. Second heart sound is normal, okay? So my diagnosis is a case of metallic metal valve replacement. See, again, just what I, uh, what I have done. On examination of this gentleman, uh, <coughs> there is a midline sternostomy scar, scar. Okay, pulse is uh, 80 bit per minute, which is regular. Apex bit is undisplaced. <coughs> Left parasternal hip palpable P2, A2 is uh, absent. On auscultation, there is a metallic click which coincide with the faster sound. So my diagnosis, this is case of mitral valve replacement. Okay. Again, on examination of this uh, gentleman, I feel there is a midline sternostomy scar, pulse is 80 bit per minute, which is regular, uh, or pulse is uh, 70 bit per minute, which is irregularly irregular, apex bit is undisplaced, the parasternal heave is uh, present, alpha P2, and it is absent. On escalation, there is a metallic click which coincides with the first heart sound. As I have said, there is a left parasternal hip, so second heart sound is loud. So this is a case of metallic mitral valve replacement with features of pulmonary hypertension. Okay, so <laughs> MBR plus pulmonary hypertension plus uh, atrial fibrillation. It's also possible that patient have same time MBR plus patient have atrial fibrillation or MBR with pulmonary hypertension or MBR with both. Okay, the most common ca case comes in the simple MBR or MBR with atrial fibrillation. Okay. Now, in case of the aortic valve replacement, uh, on examination of this gentleman, I found there is a midline status to be scar, pulse is 76 bit per minute, which is regular. Apex beta undisplaced, left parasternal hip, purple P2 and A2 is absent. On auscultation, there is a metallic click which coincides with the second heart sound. 
here i will say faster sound will be normal faster sound is normal so my diagnosis this is a case of metallic aortic valve replacement so this is a way how you say my finding i will say my finding what i have done okay. after that uh, he will uh, ask the question most question will be what is oh, so what is your finding i have found this is a case of just i will say the finding that of what is your diagnosis it is a diagnosis is metallic mitral valve replacement so what is the differ, differential diagnosis here yes other that is avr and dvr that means dd of uh, <coughs> if patient is mitral valve replacement dd is avr and D DVR, aortic valve replacement, TDS, MBR, and DDR. So this one is another differential diagnosis. So now, what are the indication? He will say, oh, what are the indication of uh, mitral valve replacement? So indication of uh, mitral valve uh, replacement. Okay. So actually, any mitral valve pathology like MS, I will say mitral valve pathology. That mitral valve pathology like MS where PTMC or balloon valvotomy is not suitable. PTMC is not suitable. And again, in MR, where it is symptomatic, where it is uh, symptomatic or asymptomatic patient with decreased ejection fraction plus increased left ventricular in systolic diameter. Or it regurgitated on barber, it is AR or MR. It regurgitated barber is depends on the ejection fraction or left ventricular and systolic diameter or symptom. So what is <coughs> what, what is your it uh, so in case of the mitral valve uh, replacement, <coughs> I will not say any characteristics of faster sound or second house. I will say there is a metallic key which coincides with the faster sound. Second heart sound is normal. So, what is the uh, again? What are the indication of a MBR? It may be mitral valve pathology like MS, where PTMC is not suitable, and in case of uh, a, uh, MR, where it is symptomatic or in a symptomatic patient where there is a decrease in actual fraction or it is left ventricular and systolic diameter. Okay. So uh, this is the uh, MS or MR. In case of the aortic valve replacement, I will say the same. That means aortic valve pathology. That if I am dealing with AVR, so aortic valve pathology, like AS. Okay. If if any patient is AS that is symptomatic, that I will do the <coughs> operation. And in asymptomatic case, again I will check the other finding. Here, in case of the AR, if symptomatic operation plus in asymptomatic, again two things ejection fraction, left ventricular is systolic diameter. <coughs> Here, uh, symptomatic, I will do the oper operation. In uh, asymptomatic patient, uh, I will check the other parameter. What may be the other parameter? It may be the ejection fraction or it may be the abnormal blood pressure response during exercise. It may be some uh, change. So they will not ask specifically, just I will say AS yes or AR. AR is symptomatic here, or in case of the asymptomatic, decrease is actually for just left ventricular or insistent diabetes. And again, AS yes, symptomatic, asymptomatic, and asymptomatic cases if the pleasure is severe, that less than one, or abnormal blood pressure response during exercise, then I will do the operation. Okay. Now, uh, in case of the uh, valve re uh, replacement uh, examiner will ask some other question uh, in case of the valve replacement so what he will ask in any patient of midline sternostomy scar that is midline scar i have some uh, differential diagnosis for that so what is the differential diagnosis again uh, here i will say valve replacement then it may be cabg or uh, it may be uh, heart transport, heart transport. Next, uh, it may be a, a corrective congenital heart disease, corrected congenital heart disease. 
so corrected congenital uh, heart disease lastly uh, which is a uh, thibectomy thibectomy so <clears throat> in case of bilateral stenotomy scar what is by differential diagnosis it is valve replacement <laughs> CAVG, corrective congenital heart disease, heart, heart transplant, and the thibectomy. Okay. So here, uh, another important thing is that my case is valve replace, re replacement, that is vital or aortic valve. You will ask, so uh, why you are so sure that this valve is functioning or not? So <laughs> this valve is functioning or not? So because uh, <clears throat> what are the signs of functional valve? Another question is what are the uh, signs of functional valve? Okay. So if any patient, his function, uh, functional uh, valve indicates that there is a click sound. That is, I will found there is a metallic click plus there is a no regurgitated murmur plus features. That is a patient has a stable. The no features, no features of a fluid overload, fluid overload or heart failure feature. That means uh, JVP normal, okay? Clear lung base, clear lung base. No edema. So all this indicates that this valve is functioning. So examiner will ask the question, why you are so sure that uh, the valve is functioning? Yes, uh, or examination, the special JVP is normal and with precordium, metallic click is present, and no regurgitated barber, and there is lung blazes there and no peripheral edema. So I think this patient has uh, a functional valve replacement. So uh, and there examiner will ask the question, what are the signs of, what are the uh, signs of valve failure, valve failure? Just opposite, absence of click, Absence of click. So any patient have replaced valve with absence of click indicate valve failure. That regurgitated barber. That means vital regurgitation in vital valve replacement, aortic regurgitation in aortic valve replacement. Okay. That features of fluid overload, fluid overload feature. So uh, what are the features? Raise JVP, uh, basal crepitation and peripheral edema. So features of uh, fl fluids overload. So all those things indicate uh, that a valve failure. And uh, now is uh, what are the cause? What are the cause, common causes of valve disease? Causes of uh, valve failure. So causes of uh, valve failure. Can I have a question uh, here? Yes, you can ask. Uh, regarding the absent of click, uh, could it be a tissue valve replacement and the patient uh, does yes. not have any feature of failure? Okay, so you are right. So in case of the tissue valve replacement, we will not find any click. Okay. <clears throat> tissue valve replace gives some benefit. You don't need to use any warfarin as well as, but the problem is between short time. So, but in case of tissue valve replacement, you will find, will not find anything. So actually it will not come in the exam. See, there will be only middle status with scar, faster sign how is normal. So tissue valve uh, will not find anything. So actually it will not come in the exam. Okay. So uh, what causes of the valve failure, it may be simple infection. In any heart, there is always, infection, that is infective endocarditis, number one cause. Then it may be thrombosis. As we use all the time warfarin, so it may use thrombosis. So this is the most common cause, infection, that is infective endocarditis and thrombosis. So that we have to use warfarin, okay? Now, what are the uh, investigation we will do? Investigation, yes sir. Uh, what are the investigation uh, we will do? We will do the, as it is a heart, so all the time we'll do ECG, chest X-ray, uh, echocardiography, okay. But we'll always, it is a replace, a uh, valve replacement. So if you don't say the INR, that is PT INR, we'll, we'll lose our birth. So we'll say PT INR, okay. We'll just do the CBC to see the efficient edema because patient has replaced valve and this metallic valve, May destroy the RBC at may cause 
hemolytic anemia. So to, to the CBC, okay. And if you think that this gentle is developing infective endocarditis, at that time we have to do the uh, echo and blood culture. Echo, here is the trans esophageal echo and uh, blood culture. So blood culture. Now, as along with that, we will do other routine tests like you did for routine and microscopy examination, serum, electrolyte, creatine, liver function test, renal function test. But this is the most important investigation that is ECG, chest X ray, echo, iodine, PT, CBC. Okay. Now, regarding the treatment option, I have a yes. question. Yes. The angiography uh, in which uh, in every uh, type of valve placement uh, it is uh, we have to do or uh, when we are suspecting that there is a any uh, ischemic element that we do. Okay. Uh, thank you. So in, in any case of a valve replacement, actually we will not do the angiography. But before valve replacement, we will do the angiography if the patient is more than 40 years of age. Here, if any patient more than 40 years, uh, we are planning to do the valve replacement. So before doing that, we have to do the angiography. Okay, so at that, but after doing the valve replacement, if any patient develops ischemic syndrome, then at that time we will do the angiography, but it's not our uh, routine procedure. Okay. Another another question. Yes, yes, yes. When uh, there is a uh, um, every valve replacement has a complication of portal, uh, this uh, sorry, pulmonary hypertension. And yes. In uh, even giving the findings, uh, we have three things: whether uh, it is a uh, there is a basal craps or there is a JVP raised or a second heart sound is loud. How we can interpret uh, when we are uh, thinking that uh, the uh, second heart sound in the pulmonary area or aortic area? Uh, uh, sometimes we are not having the second art sound. Sometimes we are having the second art sound. Uh, how we can interpret uh, with the complication uh, with the pulmonary hypertension? Uh, all the yes. three things: JVP raised and uh, uh, this uh, peristaltic heave and uh, uh, this uh, uh, basal crepts. What things uh, in in all these three? What are the more uh, important for us to interpret as a case of complication with pulmonary hypertension? Yes, uh, <clears throat> after valve replacement, complication may develop, it may uh, develop pulmonary hypertension. But if think about the mitral valve replacement, in mitral valve replacement, there are also pulmonary hypertension. So in case of MBR, if any patient have left uh, peristeral hip or uh, patient is, features of loud pitot. Actually, you, uh, so we don't uh, find the feature uh, or we don't find anything to differentiate between them. So either it is developed before blood uh, valve replacement or after blood replacement. So it is very difficult at the time. Like, as it is developed before or after. In any patient of AS and AR, every patient, AS, AR, MS, MR may develop uh, uh, pulmonary hypertension, but uh, after MBR, it is developed before or after, actually it is very tough to identify. So we have uh, actually, to, uh, I have uh, yes. the question that if, the, if before valve replacement, the patient has gone into the complications of uh, pulmonary, uh, this, uh, pulmonary hypertension, does it come back to normal or it will it persist and it will give us the yes. signs after replacement? Uh, uh, yes, it after replacement, uh, <laughs> if atrial fibrillation, it will pul persist. If uh, there is a dilatation of the chamber, it will persist. But uh, pulmonary hypertension, with time, it will decrease. With time, uh, it will de decrease. It okay, also depends on the uh, uh, surgery. It says that if he is top MS, ultimately his left heart will be, uh, right heart will be dilated. So if you do the only the mitral valve replacement, and if you don't touch the right side, there will be residual uh, uh, tricuspidic agitation and patient will develop pulmonary hypertension. And you did the only the right, uh, so mitral valve replacement. You don't do anything in the uh, right side. So that time pulmonary hypertension will be persist for the lifelong. So it depends on the patient, okay? But we'll say just what our findings here, it's a critical find, but before uh, give the uh, before, before placing that into the exam, they will do the calibration. 
So if the calibration, if any patient comes with FBR, they will put, if any candidate say there is a metallic faster sound, and there is a scar, and they he say the diagnosis is the mitral valve replacement, he will pass the exam with 20 out of 20. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> so this is the uh, investigation. I will show this uh, investigation. So that uh, what uh, now the treatment plan and now the uh, management. Okay, so the management plan. Here patient is, uh, important thing is the patient is, any patient with warfarin, patient is taking warfarin, he will maintain his YOLO book. So he is maintain his uh, YOLO book. <clears throat> so he will do the regular warfarin monitoring or he will check his regular IR and put that into the YOLO book. So it's a very important thing. So any patient comes in the <clears throat> valve replacement, if I don't say the PT IR or don't say the YOLO book, will be important finding or will be our uh, mark. So what I will say again, treatment in general, that is patient education, counseling, exploration of the disease, formation of the multidisciplinary team, <coughs> regular follow-up, okay? uh, avoid uh, the patient for uh, smoking cessation, uh, avoidance of heavy exercise. Here, important thing is, I will advise the patient for lifelong anticoagulation and maintenance of YOLO or INR chart. So lifelong anticoagulation and maintenance of the YOLO book that I have not uh, <coughs> chart. Number one. Number two is effective endocarditis profile exercise. So the most important thing is that uh, lifelong anticoagulation. Uh, plus uh, I have chart or uh, uh, YOLO book maintenance. Because uh, not Everywhere is there is a yellow book. Number two is infective endocarditis profile excess. <clears throat> so, the, so there is a, a lifelong anticoagulation that is iron with uh, <clears throat> lifelong anticoagulation with maintenance of the iron uh, chart. And another thing is infective endocarditis uh, profile excess. Okay. So <clears throat> Now, uh, regarding something about the uh, uh, infective endocarditis uh, profile excess. Okay, so sometimes we confuse that uh, with rheumatic carditis uh, profile excess. Rheumatic carditis profile excess patient will take uh, the uh, penicillin, ferroxymethyl penicillin every day. But infective endocarditis, if any patient with uh, infective endocarditis, he will uh, take this uh, medicine just doing any minor operation or if it is skin uh, infection, the patient tooth extraction, any endoscopy, cystoscopy, uh, <coughs> even may take this uh, uh, before doing uh, digital rectal examination. So this is the infective endocarditis profile excessive. Patient will not take uh, <coughs> lifelong. She will take this just before doing any procedure or any uh, minor operation or any skin infection. But in case of the rheumatic, uh, Profile access patient will take every day. Okay. Now the uh, <coughs> uh, another report is the target uh, IDR level. Target in case of the if you consider the uh, mitral valve and aortic valve, so mitral valve or aortic valve, mitral valve target IDR is more. Okay, here the in case of the mitral valve replacement is target is three point five. In aortic valve replacement, it is uh, two point five. So in case of the uh, mitral valve or uh, aortic valve, but in simple mitral valve replacement is 3.5, aortic valve replacement it is 2.5. And we'll add 0.5 if we think that is a highly thrombotic stage. That if any patient with mitral or aortic valve replacement associated actual fibrillation, then it will be four, okay? In any patient with previous thromboembolic disease or any patient with a uh, hypercoagulable stage at that time uh, we'll add a point four. So uh, simple that is mitral valve replacement target IRS is three point five. In case of aortic valve replacement target IRS is two point five. Okay. So uh, those are the uh, uh, valve replacement. Just I will say something about the other scar. Just uh, I will say something about the other scar. In other scars, sometimes it comes in the exam that 
you are doing the examination with the patient, but the same time you'll find some scar here or here, mostly here. So you are, there is no midline scar. <coughs> you'll examine the patient and you'll find the scar is here, okay? So <coughs> that, is, uh, that is a scar. And if any time you will find the scar is here, you will going to palpate the scar. So <coughs> in this, there will be, when you palpate the scar, there will be a, a metallic device, metallic device. So there, it is a device scar. It comes in the exam very frequently. So there will be a device scar. The position will be left, uh, <coughs> left, uh, the left supramemory or below the left clavicle is the position. But sometimes it may <coughs> change into the right side, but mostly the left side. So in left side, uh, just below the left clavicle, you will find a, some scar. Just feel the scar, you will feel some uh, metallic feeling. So this sort of scar, if you find this, you will not specify this, you will not specify it. Just you say there is a scar in the left supramemory area and beneath the scar, there is a device. So you will say just this because uh, <coughs> it's maybe very, it's because it may be simple pacemaker, say, uh, or it may be ICD device or it may be CRT device. So uh, device scar, maybe one of three. It may be simple pacemaker or it may be ICD device or a CRT device, okay? Now, examiner may ask that question. And important thing is that <coughs> you will find this is device along with other findings. Just I'm sharing my experience and that patient has aortic regurgitation along with <coughs> just there is a scar, a device scar. And just I say there is a device and he say what may be. It, this elderly patient think he's, he has comes with previously headache or dizziness. So that was a pacemaker. <coughs> so, so in case of, uh, there, it is very common. They put a device in the exam. So <coughs> pacemaker or ICD, or you may find the CRT. Just I will say there is a scar, the left supramemory area or left, uh, just uh, left side below the sternum and beneath the scar, there is a metallic device. So what it may be examiner will ask the question, it may be pacemaker, it may be ICD, it may be CRT. So uh, they will ask some question. So what the, the indication, uh, what is the indication of uh, pacemaker? Okay. So just I will say this is a third degree heart block or complete heart block, symptomatic, uh, <coughs> symptomatic Mobis type two heart block. That is uh, any uh, symptomatic uh, Mobis type two heart block that is uh, symptomatic bifascicular or trifascicular block plus uh, trifascicular block and six sinus uh, syndrome so i'll just say uh, just two or three things okay so what is a three that means any patient uh, have any uh, develop any pause if it is more than three seconds that is the indication of the uh, spectrum so it may be a complete heart block, third degree block, second now comes to the second, which type two second degree heart block, or second again bifascicular block, or trifascicular block, symptomatic, and lastly, six sinus syndrome. So we are, we are moving around two and three, by and right, and six, six sinus syndrome. So this is the indication of pacemaker. Now come to the uh, CRT, that is <laughs> implantable cardioverter and defibrillator. See, in case of CRT, actually, there is a shock coil. That means any patient having chance of VT or BF, uh, <coughs> there is a shock coil. He will give the shock to the patient. Okay, so this will prevent the patient from dying. <coughs> in CRT device, there is a two type, uh, two indications. Number one is a, <coughs> a primary prevention. or That means before the development of VT and BF, so primary prevention, and number two is a secondary prevention. So before the development of VT and BF, and after the development of VT or BF. So any patient develop VT or BF, VT or BF <coughs> with no reversible cause, 
with no reversible cause. That patient of cardiac arrest survivor, that any patient develop VTR, VF, you give the CPR, patient is now stable, give the shock, and you have charged the electrolyte, anything, you not found anything. Just it's the indication of ICD. Okay. So any patient who develop VTRB number, and it is a secondary cause. So after the development of VTRB, primary cause, any patient with congenital heart disease. That means congenital heart disease. That means long QT syndrome, uh, Brugada syndrome. Okay. There in, in case of uh, erythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy, if any patient of HOCOM, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy patient, if you develop the whole turn, you have seen that their patient is developing non sustaining beating. So you will put a uh, ICD. So any patient with uh, after MI. So after, if any after MI, patient ejection fraction is uh, below 30%, that is also indication of putting ICD. Okay. Because if any patient with uh, after MI, low ejection fraction is high chance of developing PT and VR. So just ICD, there is a primary prevention and secondary prevention. Primary prevention is before the development of BT and BF, that is congenital long QT syndrome, Brugada syndrome, erythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy, HOCM. Or after MI, if any patient has low ejection fraction, this is the most common cause. Uh, after MI, if any patient has low ejection fraction. Okay. Lastly, that is a CRT device. That is cardiac research therapy. So where it is done, if any patient of heart, heart failure, if patient develop heart failure and with symptom, that is the class two to four symptom, and you have checked the ECG, ECG is sinus rhythm, and but there is a QRS complex is wide, more than 130, uh, 36 millisecond, and patient has or LBBB pattern. Those are the indication of giving CRT. That means any patient of chronic heart failure, not uh, already getting the treatment, but condition is not improving. So at that time, we will put CRT device. So before doing the CRT, criteria is heart failure. Symptom must be die heart two to four. Patient uh, who should have sinus rhythm and QRS complex should be white. You see, is only more than 30 milliseconds, and ECG should be in the LBBB morphology. So those are the indication of the CRT. So in case of the device car, I will not specify number one. And examiner will ask the question, what is the device? I will say pacemaker, ICD, or CRT, any one of those. Okay. Then examiner will ask the indication of one of those three. So what are the indication of pacemaker? I will put two or three. That is third, third degree heart block or complete heart block, second degree heart block, that is Mobis type two heart block. Bifacicular, triplicicular block, or it is symptomatic, six sinus. What is the indication of ICD? ICD for BTBF prevention. It may be primary uh, before the development of like uh, congenital disease, like congenital QT syndrome, uh, Brugada syndrome, ARBC, HOCF, or after MI, if there is a low ejection fraction. And in case of the se uh, secondary, any patient develop BT and BF who, due to an identifiable cause or reverse without reversible cause. Lastly, CRT, any patient with heart failure, or uh, NIHA class two or class four symptom, like white QRS complex, I will put the CRT device. So uh, that's all for the uh, cardiac uh, scar. So any question uh, about the any scar or anything, what we have discussed today? Sir, endocarditis prophylaxis, I want to have some, uh, uh, this, uh, where you are giving continuously medication and where you are, this was somewhat, uh, uh, yeah. yes. yes, so there is two things regarding the prophylaxis in the uh, cardiac disease. Number one thing is endocarditis prophylaxis. And another which I'm given is a rheumatic prophylaxis. In endocarditis prophylaxis, just uh, when I will give this uh, endocarditis or prophylaxis. So uh, in which patient I will give this endocarditis uh, prophylaxis? Number one, any patient, any pa patient with uh, congenital heart disease, 
congenital heart disease congenital heart disease patient it should be cyanotic so any patient of cyanotic heart disease that means any top patient uh, he will <coughs> i will give him endocarditis prophylaxis number 1 or <coughs> any patient with congenital heart disease where i replace prosthetic material i any patient with asd i have closed the asd with prosthetic material and uh, after the closure patient, six month patient will up to six month patient will get into part this prophylaxis okay any patient with previous history of previous history of infective endocarditis will get infective endocarditis prophylaxis any uh, patient with prosthetic hull or prosthetic pulp that is prosthetic material it may be mitral valve replacement aortic valve replacement nowadays a lot of prosthetic material use pda device asd closure device in case of the closure device if you will get only for 6 months because after 6 months it will be endothelialized at that time we will give infective endocarditis prophylaxis okay we will give antibiotic for that reason it may be, it is usually enoxamethyl pens all patient he will not take this medicine every day those patient is underwent in having a uh, tooth extraction he has any boil in the uh, skin he will do cystoscopy endoscopy colonoscopy even he underwent uh, <coughs> some uh, digital rectal examination so there is a possibility some infective focus at that time he will take before the procedure he will take the prophylaxis after the procedure he will take three or four day for this prophylaxis then again stop the medicine rheumatic fever prophylaxis patient will take daily medicine daily medicine it duration may be very it may be 5 year or up to 21 years of age or up to 40 years of age or life long it depends on the duration but in endocarditis prophylaxis is specific any patient with congenital cyanotic heart disease any patient of uh, previous history of endocarditis or prosthetic use that we might tell one here patient will take infective endocarditis prophylaxis but is not the daily basis neumatic prophylaxis patient will take daily basis any other question so, sir congenital heart disease how long patient will take if not on daily basis then what uh, how much oh, okay in patient with uh, congenital heart disease that is cyanotic heart disease it will pass its life long patient will take this prophylaxis life long okay now i have replaced my mitral valve that is i am a patient of mitral valve replacement i will take this life long i have asd i have closed my asd with a device so i will take this only for 6 months but i will not take this medicine every day i am very good but now i develop a dental problem i will go to the dental clinic and they suggest to tooth extraction but before tooth extraction i will take uh, antibiotic prophylaxis that is the endocarditis prophylaxis but if i have rheumatic fever i will take every day uh, medicine for 5 years that is the uh, rheumatic fever pro- prophylaxis that is uh, a, a rheumatic fever prophylaxis because if again there is group b streptococcal infection there is a subsequent fibrosis of the valve okay sir okay thank you sir thank you very much okay so uh, uh, thank you for attending this session today so we will discuss some other thing in the, again in another day because it's very tough to so that like some other mama that is aortic stenosis and, uh, <coughs> and aortic regurgitation so thank you everyone for the participation okay so thank you so much, sir. please share the recording thank you so much okay thank you so assalamu alaikum